Step 5 of the Trade Log Quick Start Guide is to reconcile 1099 proceeds. This is an important step to complete before finalizing tax reporting. If you have multiple brokerage accounts, you will reconcile each account individually before combining data files. Before proceeding, you should locate your broker provided 1099B report. You may have received a copy of this report in the mail, or many brokers also provide a digital copy online. For the sake of this lesson, I'll be using a 1099B issued by TD Ameritrade, as shown here. With the corresponding trade log file open, click on the Reports menu, select the option for Gains and Losses in Tax Forms. For the report type, select the option to Reconcile 1099B. A dialog box will appear for Form 1099B information. You will now enter key information that was reported by your broker on the 1099B. First, you will enter the gross proceeds or total sales reported by the broker. This is often referred to as the total for Line 2 or Box 2 on the 1099B. Broker reporting may vary. Some brokers provide this total gross proceeds number as shown in this example. On the other hand, some brokers require you to add up the total for each subsection of the 1099B. There may be multiple sections. You must enter the total proceeds for all sections, both covered and non-covered securities, short-term and long-term. The gross proceeds number is essential for reconciling your trade log data. If you only trade options or futures, it is possible that the total gross proceeds will be zero, and you may not even receive a 1099B form. I will now enter the gross proceeds number for the example I am using. Next, you should enter reported cost basis totals for both short-term and long-term securities from the 1099B. These totals will allow TradeLog to make necessary adjustments to your IRS Form 8949 for cost basis reporting. The cost basis totals you enter into TradeLog should only be for covered securities. This means the IRS required your broker to report the cost basis for that security. Many brokers also list non-covered cost basis information on the 1099 as supplemental information. However, it was not reported to the IRS unless it was a covered security. For example, in this 1099B shown, you will note that the broker uses the code N in box 6 for not provided, and the code P for provided. Not provided means the cost basis was not reported to the IRS. Once again, broker reporting varies. Some brokers will provide you with a total cost basis for both short-term and long-term securities that are considered as covered by the IRS. However, some brokers do not segregate totals between long-term and short-term or covered and non-covered, in which case you will need to determine the totals yourself. In the example shown here, the broker has provided totals for covered and non-covered securities. We will use the total circled for our 1099B as covered cost basis for short term. If you are not sure about how your broker is reporting on the 1099B, you can refer to our online tax topics about IRS 1099B reporting. Go to www.tradelogsoftware.com, click on Tax Topics, and then 1099B. I will now enter the reported cost basis for short-term securities from my 1099B. In this example, I do not have reported long-term cost basis, so I will leave that field blank. Next, it is important to review the 1099B details section along with your broker provided 1099B. Since broker reporting varies, it is necessary to identify how your broker reported certain information. I will explain each checkbox to you. Options are not required to be reported to the IRS until 2014 tax year. Therefore, most brokers do not report options, and this box can be left unchecked. 
Note, some brokers do list option transactions in a supplemental section with your 1099B. However, this is not the same as reporting to the IRS. The next checkbox deals with the reporting of option premiums. If you traded options, you need to confirm whether your broker adjusted the reported sales for option premiums. Typically, this is indicated on the 1099B where the broker reports total sales, as shown here. Or if the broker provides explanatory details, you can check there. The last three checkboxes pertain to other securities that may be reported as either covered or non-covered, depending on your broker. You will need to refer to your 1099B to determine how your broker reports each type of security. ETFs and ETNs can be tricky. Some brokers define certain securities as ETFs, whereas others do not. If all ETFs are reported as covered securities on the 1099B, then check the box. If only some ETFs are reported as covered, but others are not, then refer to our user guide for specific instructions on handling that type of situation. Once you have entered the necessary information, you can choose to print out a copy of the 1099B details for your records. Next, you will click on Run 1099 Reconciliation Report to proceed to the next step. The generated report will reconcile gross proceeds with trade log reported sales for Form 8949. The difference should be close to zero or positive. Follow the instructions on the report for understanding the totals and any differences. It is not abnormal to have a difference of a few cents or possibly even a few dollars depending on the volume of trading. If a large difference exists, you should review additional help topics found in our user guide. The first thing we suggest in such a situation is to double check the number you entered for gross proceeds when doing the 1099 reconciliation. Before continuing, you can print the reconciliation report or save a PDF copy for your records. This report does not go to the IRS. Once you have reconciled your 1099B proceeds, you can now continue to step six of the Trade Log Quick Start Guide.